Hey, and welcome back to the series that we're doing on the PreSonus Studio Live Series 3 consoles. Today, we're taking a look at the effects inside the console. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So, let's jump in. Hey, if you're new here, my name's James, and I help Soundtech save the day by making great mixes. So, nobody's thinking about the audio, they're thinking about the event. So, today we're taking a look at effects. And effects can either make or break your mix. It's kind of the last 5%. It's not gonna totally ruin things, but it can actually add that little bit of icing that takes your mix from good to really great. So let's take a look at the effects units inside the console. Now, you can call me a savage, but this first one, I really struggle with. Most of the sounds in here, I think just are totally odd, and I don't really see where I would use them in a music mix or really any mix. But you can get it dialed in, but there's a very narrow window that we're gonna do it. So let's take a listen. It's the digital XL reverb, and the different presets that it has are kind of weird. The first one that it loads up with automatically is a van. And I don't know about you, but I've never thought, hmm, I really wanna make this snare drum feel like it's in a van. So let's take a look. I've got it on effects A, and right now I've got all my drums sent to it post fader. On my drum send, let's take a look at that. Uh, I've got the low end rolled off, but the EQ's off. Uh, but I can turn that on if I want. I like to filter out low end going into my reverb, especially if I'm sending the entire drum kit. That way the rumble of the kick drum and the toms doesn't excite the reverb and make things weird. So I, I rolled that off a little bit. Maybe I'll roll it up just a little bit more because that helps thin out the drum reverb send a little bit. Let's take a listen. Now, this by itself is actually not that bad. It's kind of just the early reflections that you might want to hear coming into a reverb. The only problem is, on these effects sends, we can't send an effects return back to another effect. So if I wanted to add these early reflections to another reverb that I really liked, I wouldn't be able to do that. So there's the weirdness of the van. Let me play around with the parameters some and you can see how things get crazy really fast. Okay, so we dialed in something that we really like. So this kind of feels good. Feels more conspicuous in its absence and then in its presence. It's not too bright or too woofy or anything weird like that, but we've got it dialed in. Let me play around with these two parameters that are on here that really don't make much sense to me, but I guess it is what it is, right? There's reflection and there's size. And listen to how it gets crazy really quickly. So on the reflection knob, basically 100 goes nuts, 
or 1.0 goes nuts. And then as we get below 0.9, it almost goes away or it becomes so subtle that it's very, very minor. You really have to crank it up to hear what it's doing. If you want to use this reverb and you're really saying, I wanna dive in and use it, keep your reflections between 0.9 and one or maybe 0.99. And that's kind of your short, medium, long reverb time, I guess. I really don't understand. I read the manual. I still don't understand what they're trying to do with it. I understand what reflections are and early reflections, but this is not quite behaving the way that I thought it might based on what they described. So I've got this dialed into a kind of a medium. Uh, let me play around with the size and you can see how that goes from really, really weird, uh, another end of really, really weird. So let's take a listen. I wonder if any of the engineers at PreSonus actually used some of these settings on the far extremes of these parameters and actually liked it. Because you can call me savage if you want, but I think this is kind of ridiculous for most of the range of these knobs, whatever these knobs actually do. It's trying to emulate the room size so the reflections are further apart the larger the room you get, right? Because there's more distance between the walls. You would expect there to be longer time between those. That's the way it goes. But as you get into those bigger sizes, it just, to me, sounds unusable. I probably will not ever use that. Uh, if I have to use this reverb, I will dial it in very, very carefully in a very narrow range of where these knobs live, right? So come back here to the, you know, five to 10 on that. So I've got a little bit that I can use there. Now, it is all of note that there's the low pass filter built in. So if you want a little bit darker reverb, you can do that. And low frequency damping gain, I don't understand that altogether. These other two knobs are so perplexing, I don't even know why I would want to understand them. It's just kind of weird. Now, the pre-delay functions like you would expect a pre-delay to function, right? It's in milliseconds. It's in something that you can relate to any other reverb unit you've done. You could even calculate the tempo of the song and come up with a note value to dial in the pre-delay. But aside from those few things, uh, this probably is a one trick pony kind of reverb unit and it's not the one for me. Thankfully, the rest are not so bad. Let's move on. The next reverb unit in this console is the PAE 16 digital reverb. And since you're probably not a recording engineer from the 1980s, I'll go ahead and tell you that it's supposed to look a lot like the AMS RMX 16. What does that mean to you? It means it's got some cool presets that are either going to work or they're not, but it's got kind of that classic sound and this one kind of redeems the reverb unit to me. So let's take a look at the rock snare room or preset number one. Here, instead of the traditional reverb time in seconds and milliseconds, it's got another value that's somewhere between zero and one. And kind of like on the other unit, most of it is not that usable. I'm not sure what they're basing it on. I don't know how to calculate it. And I'm a big fan of dialing in my reverb time to the tempo of the song so that I've got a couple options to instead of 10,000. On here, I've really only got a few because it either works or it doesn't from about 0.8 on up. So 
Not a huge fan of the versatility of this, but if it works, it works. Now, another control on here is the diffusion or how smooth the reverb is as the tail goes on. So a higher diffusion value is gonna have more where lower diffusion value, you're gonna hear more of the grit in between. You might really like the higher diffusion values, especially if you're listening in headphones. But one trick for dialing in your reverb is that the farther the listener is from the speaker, the lower the diffusion you wanna have. So if you're in a live sound situation where you're really far from the speakers, a lower diffusion value or kind of a grittier reverb is gonna fit better in that mix because it's also happening in a room, right? So we're adding reverb to something that already has reverb or our speaker system in an acoustic space. So that's one thing that you can dial in and kind of get it fine-tuned with the texture that you want out of the reverb unit. It's kind of fun. Again, they have a low-pass filter on here. They've got the low-frequency dampening as well. I never really play with that. Let's just listen to the reverb and play around. At these lower diffusion values, it almost feels like it's got a little bit of a pulse to it, which is kind of cool. Uh, it just depends if it's gonna work for that particular song or not. So you can mess around with it on your own time. And pro tip, anytime you're playing around with effects is not wasting time. You're learning the tools that you wouldn't be able to reuse otherwise and see and experiment what's going on. So have fun with it and experiment with tracks and playing with your effects. You never know when you're gonna find something brilliant. Now let's scroll through a few more of the presets that are built in when you just mash a number. Because that's always fun to win when you hit a button and it works. So let's take a listen. Hang on, there's a vocal doubler, so I'm gonna switch from sending drums to the reverb unit to vocals to the reverb unit, because I'm here for you. And we wait for the vocals to come in, because that's what we do. You used the words of an old gong man to say God will strike the shepherd Oh, I know these lines have never been wrong before, but I swear they won't define me now. Oh, I knew you were. All right, it sounds pretty cool and out of proportion. Yeah, they sound weird. But let's see if we can dial it in a little bit, and maybe I'll pull the vocal send back on the main vocal and have it ride more on the background vocal or the harmony part and see how we can make that kind of maybe a little wider or maybe a little deeper. Let's listen and see. You used the words of an old gone man They say God will strike the shepherd down, down, down. Oh, I know these lines have never been wrong before, but I swear they won't define Wrong about me, I knew you were wrong, 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 wrong about me, oh, I knew you. Yeah, so it adds a little bit of thickness, adds a little bit of width. It's kind of nice. It might be something that I'll try again in the future. Let's see how the vocals sound in the last three presets, because I've already got them sent there. Why mess things up? You use the words of an old gone man. 
say God will strike the shepherd down, down, down. Oh, I know these lines have never been wrong before, but I swear they won't define me now. Oh, I knew you were wrong, 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 wrong about me. about me oh i knew you were wrong 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 about me i knew you were wrong 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 about me so just like most of the other presets it's got to work in context and these are pretty cool so give them a shot see if they work in your mix the next reverb unit up is the 335 digital reverb and it's got a bunch of presets too, and they're on buttons, which I kind of appreciate because I just want to figure out, is this going to work? Is this going to work? Is this going to work? Okay, that's close. Now I can tweak. That's the way I roll, so there's a free tip for you. Let's check these out on the piano because we can. So a lot of these work. Some of them are tailored more toward drums, and you can see that in the name. The concert hall, the church, those feel really good on the piano, like you might expect. Some of them didn't feel good on the piano, but that's why you have other buttons to try. Like the PAE-16, this one has the diffusion control, the pre-delay, the reflection, and the size. And also on little slider, which I appreciate having that big, is the low-pass filter, because I typically like to get my reverbs just dark enough, right? I'm trying to make them dark enough so that they don't stick out in the mix, but have enough brightness and presence so that they're not totally buried and making things muddy. So I appreciate that about this reverb and it works pretty well. You just gotta get it dialed in and hitting the buttons is always a win in my book. Next up, we've got the vintage plate, which this is not a bad plate reverb sound. It's pretty simple. You've got your reflections or your reverb time, and you've got your pre-delay. Those are the two main controls. There's a low pass filter. Thank you, Presonus, for including that. And there's the low frequency dampening again, which I haven't figured out. There's different types and presets. Most of them are centered around vocals. It's got early reflections or things that are supposed to be specifically for guitars. Let's try a guitar on it. Why not?
it does what a plate's supposed to do. The large, medium, and small basically just change your reverb time, but hey, it sounds good, it is good, it's very usable, and plate reverb works in a lot of situations. It's kind of timeless like that. So reach for the plate reverb and you'll have a hard time going wrong. Now we get into the delays, which stereo delay is one of my favorite things to do, but we're gonna start with the mono delay and I'm gonna put it on the vocals. I'm gonna hit this, shut for our vocals, fix A, and now we're ready to go and hear our vocals. So on our effects, we've got our delay time, our feedback percentage, low pass filter, high pass filter, feedback low pass filter, and feedback high pass filter. The delay time is how long it waits between when the signal comes into the unit and when it gets output from the unit. So if we wanna tap in the delay time so that it can just match up to the music, it goes with what we're feeling and whether or not we're wanting to tap in an eighth note or a quarter note or a dotted 16th triplet, we can do that as well. So we can hit tap assign and now this effects master tap button will be our delay time. So if I can remember the tempo right, I'm probably a little fast. Let's play it and see. And it's gonna light up while it's going. So it shows us if we're in, in the right ballpark. I was a little fast, so let me tap along with it. still a little fast. You, you, That's you, close you, enough. The words of an old gone man, man. Gone man. Say, God, Say God will strive to shine. So even though this is time to the music, it's not quite a musical delay yet. Uh, we've got to do some things to it to make it feel more musical. The first thing we can do is add some feedback or how much of the output gets put back into the input. Now for a delay time that's this slow or we're going a slow quarter note, because it's kind of a ballad, 25% uh, is going to be plenty. So I'm gonna tap feedback, bring this up. Now we can listen to that. Even though the level's gonna be too loud, I'll dial it in a little bit and we'll get it working. Words of an old gone man. Say God will strike. Oh, I know these lines have never been wrong before. But I swear they want to find me now. So you can hear how it decays longer. It's not just the one repeat and then it's done. Next, we have our low pass filter and high pass filter. One of the things about creating distance with our mixes is that high frequencies dissipate over distance. So if we want something to feel like it's farther away, we're going to put a low pass filter on it. If we want something to be thinner, we'll put the high pass filter on it. Now on my effects send, I already put the EQ on here to take care of some of the low end because I don't like a lot of low end going into my effects. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off for now so that we can just hear the high pass filter and low pass filter inside the unit. So I go back here to my mono delay and I'm gonna turn down the low pass filter. So now our S's and T's, uh, our brighter consonant sounds are going to uh, get chopped off or reduced their level in the delay. So they're still gonna be there for the dry vocal, but in the delays, they're not gonna be there uh, or at least they're gonna be there less. Now I could also roll up the high pass filter. Uh, a good starting place for this high pass filter is around 200 hertz. I do that no matter what on vocals. If I want my vocals to feel thinner or kind of, mm, I don't know how else to say it other than, mm, uh, I'm gonna roll that up to around 400. But uh, if I want them warmer in the time domain, I will you know leave it around 200. So now the initial delay and then the subsequent delays will be low pass and high pass filtered. You can listen to me play with that right now. You, 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 the words of an old man. Say God, say God, we'll start, we'll strive, we'll shepherd. Oh, I know all these lines have never been, have never been before, but I swear. Wrong 
about me. I knew you were wrong, 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 wrong about me. Oh, I knew you were wrong, 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 wrong about me. I knew you were wrong, wrong, wrong about me. You, you. So that's the low pass filter and the high pass filter on the overall delay. So all the delays are going to be the same. Now, there's also the feedback low pass filter and high pass filter. So what this is going to do is the initial delay is going to be one tone. We could open this up so that it's fully bright, unaffected at all. That initial delay coming back through the delay unit is going to be one tone. The subsequent delays that are feeding back can be low pass filtered or high pass filtered even more, making them feel further away in distance as they're further away in time. So let's check it out. Words of an old man say God will start the shepherd down down. Oh, I know these lines have never been wrong before, but I swear. So it's going down in level because our feedback percentage, but it's also getting darker or thinner depending on how you have this feedback low pass filter and high pass filter set. Now that we've mastered the mono delay, let's move on to the stereo delay and talk about my concerns over here too. Load up the stereo delay. We've got our delay time A and our delay time B. Those are assigned to the left and right channels. Maybe. We got to check it out. They also have their independent feedback, but there's a spread control, right? We can have this 0% or totally mono, or we can go spread 100% so that they're different left and right. Let me just set them up by hand. Let's set this one up at uh, 425 milliseconds or some 450 and 900, right? So that's gonna be kind of like an eighth note on left side and a quarter note on the right side ish because I didn't really get it dialed in really well with the tap. We'll talk about the tap in a second. So let's just listen to this single delay, no feedback, 100% spread so you hear the left and the right. You, 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 the words of an old man, say God will start Now, I know this is crazy, but I'm just trying to explain it. I would never publish a mix with this like this, okay? For the record, I wouldn't do this. Okay, Jesse, don't worry. I speak to Jesse because I'm talking about poor Bishop Hooper. He's the band that wrote this song and they did all this. Special thanks to them for letting me use these tracks. I will put a link to their music down in the description below. So you can hear how there's a delay over here that's going one speed and a delay that's going here half that speed because I've got the math worked out to be about that, right? We can also change the feedback on either one. For an eighth note delay, sometimes I like to go up to 35 or 40% for my feedback. Uh, so we'll kick this up to 40% and we'll put this up to 25 because this is still more like a quarter note delay. So we'll listen to how this sounds and I'll tuck it back in the mix so you can stop getting upset about how outlandish my delay is. I'm just trying to show you guys how it works, okay? Easy. Chill out. It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. You, 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 the words of an old gone man. They say God will strike the shepherd. I know these lines have never been wrong before, but I swear they won't define me now. Oh, I knew you were wrong, 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 wrong about me. I knew you were wrong, 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 wrong about me. Oh, I knew you you can see I've got the level pulled back really far. It's because when you're using delay, it doesn't have to be really loud to fill its role. This might even still be too loud, right? When I'm down here on the fader, here's another pro tip for you. When I'm down here on the fader, I've got it pulled back so far, I don't really have a lot of fine tuning control. 
So one thing that I'll do is if the channel return doesn't have like an input trim or something, I will go to my effect send and I will pull this down a little bit more. As I pull this down, that means I can put my fader for the return up a little bit closer to zero, gives me a lot more fine tuning on my levels and control. So there's a pro tip for you. I won't even make you pay for it. You'll just have to watch another commercial because this video is getting kind of long. So now we get to the tap part, right? We can keep the relationship between our delay A and our delay B the same, but the tap tempo will shift it based on what you're tapping. So I'm gonna stop explaining. I'm just gonna show you what's going on here. So I'm gonna hit tap assign. You can see that it's tapping up probably on the eighth note. If I've got these delay times, let's see, let me get this exactly at a, or really close to a two, you know, an integer of each other. So we've got 450 and 900. That's one half of the other. So when I hit tap, they're both gonna change at that same ratio. So let's say I wanna go to 16th notes. or something like 16th notes. You can see now this one's at 306, this one's at 614. It's preserved that relationship. So if you wanna have eighth and quarter together, you can dial that in. Then whenever you're tapping, the right side is going to change at the same ratio. I hope that makes sense. All right, let me get my finger warm ups going because I gotta tap in on the 16th, okay? I think I'm warmed up. You use the words of an old gong man. Say God will strike the shepherd down, down, down. Oh, I know these lines have never been wrong before, but I swear they won't define me now. Oh, I knew you were wrong, 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 wrong about me. I knew you were wrong. About me. Oh. So if I want to take the spread and I want to have them both mono, so both delay A and B are going to both channels, right? It's all centered. Just take that spread and I can put it down to zero or anywhere in between. But I typically like to keep them totally hard left and right. Uh, it just makes more room in the middle for vocals. That's what I want. You can see down here, they've got the feedback A low pass filter and feedback A high pass filter. So we can do those separately if you want one of them to be a little brighter than the other one, or you've got a different decay percentage so that it feels a little bit better for the ones that are longer or more time in between to be a little bit brighter, maybe, or maybe you want it darker. I don't know, you can play around with it. That's how that works, just like on the mono delay. Now, another note about the tap feature. Sometimes I wanna choose something that's syncopated. So I wanna have a quarter note and a dotted 16th note, right? I kinda wanna get that galloping feel that you can get that's really popular in a lot of worship music. Thank you, you 2 and The Edge. But that's not really that easy for my brain to calculate what I need to dial in my two reverb units. Now, one has gotta be a quarter and the other one's gotta be the dotted 16th or... Yeah, I'm already confused. So. I think what I would do with that is use my handy dandy delay calculator or find some website that does it and punch in what it would be maybe probably for 60 beats per minute, right? So then my one of my delay times would be one second. And then maybe that dotted whatever needs to be 600 and sorry, or 800 and I don't know, something. That way they're, they're gonna track together uh, and I can have that. But I don't really wanna do math when I'm mixing. Not math like that, at least. I wanna say, huh, I wonder if the dotted 16th works better here, or I wonder if the dotted eighth works better here. I just wanna figure that out on the fly, not have to do a bunch of math to figure out if I wanna do that. So that's another weaker spot of this delay unit. And if I were giving it a grade, I would mark it down a few points, but I'm a teacher, but I'm not that kind of a teacher. I don't know. Nobody gave this to me as a project or an assignment, although that's kind of cool that I get to do this. All right, on to the next one. Let's play around with the ping pong delay because that's always fun to go back and forth, left and right. So let's check it out. We'll set the delay time, 8.45. Check it out. You use the words of an old gone man. They say God will strike the shepherd. Down, down, down. Oh, I know 
these lines have never been wrong before, but I swear they I still don't quite get this one, so it's going to take me a minute. So hang on. Let me pull up the manual. When in doubt, pull up the manual. I don't really get it. I don't. And the manual isn't much help either. So let me see if delay offset A is set to two milliseconds. Maybe that'll do different for left and right. I don't know. To me, a ping pong delay should be a delay on the left side and then the delay on the right side. And if it's feeding back, that right side delay also gets sent back to the left and it goes back and forth. I can't figure out how to make this do that exactly. If you're smarter than me and you know how to set this up, type it down in the comments below. I really want to hear from you. Also, say on the Digital XL Reverb, if you've got some presets that you love for that or you think that really are brilliant, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear from you. I really appreciate the community that comments on my videos. I read all your comments and I'd love to hear from you. So don't go ahead and tell me down below how you have this set up for the ping pong delay and maybe it'll be awesome sometime. Let's move on to the next one. Next, we've got our chorus, which is kind of coming back in style because 80s sounds are back in style now. And there's a certain thickness that you can get from vocals, especially when it's done very subtly or say you've got an acoustic guitar and you wanna make it feel a little bit bigger and wider, chorus can do the trick, but you gotta go easy on it. Basically what chorus does is it takes an oscillator or something that's shifting back and forth slowly and it shifts the pitch of that signal while retaining also the dry signal. We've got our rate or how fast that pitch is shifting Right, if our rate was fast, it's gonna shift up and down really quickly. If it's slow, it's gonna be more drawn out over time. And that's in Hertz or cycles per second. There is a way to calculate that so that you can time it to a tempo of a song. I just don't remember what the math is. So if you know the math, you can put that in the comments down below too. Uh, we've got the depth or how much of the effect is in there. And when we're running it in parallel like this, right, we're running from an aux send or our effects send, to the unit and then back on a different channel, we usually keep that 100%. We've got our width. The width shifts the phase of the LFO. I'm still lost. You're probably smarter than me if you're watching this video. So just, if you know all this, tell me again in the comments. Um, we can have the shape of the LFO. So whether or not it's a smooth transition, you know, like a sine wave, whee, or it's more abrupt, like, you know, triangles going up and down. Uh, or it can get really abrupt with like points on either end. I don't know. We'll take a listen. There's some presets. It'll be a whole lot of fun. Let's check it out. Oh, I knew you were wrong, 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 wrong about me. I knew you were wrong, wrong, wrong. Oh, I knew you were wrong, 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 wrong about me. So there it is. Chorus is chorus. If you know how to really dial it in, awesome. If you don't, pick a preset, keep it subtle, and keep it tucked back, or else people are going to stare at you and think, yeah, journey. Now, the last effect that they have on here is a flanger. A flanger needs a little bit of a history lesson so that you can understand what it's doing. 
And it's kind of fun to explain to you because Josh Scott did a terrible job explaining what Flanger was on one of his effects episodes. So even though he's just down the street, I'm gonna to try to give him a sick burn. Back in the analog studio days, before there were digital effects units, they were able to create a delay between the record head and the playback head of a tape machine. So if you listen back to old Elvis stuff or stuff with a nice uh, slapback echo, that was the difference in time between tape passing over the record head, being recorded on the tape, as that tape moves over, it gets played back a little bit later. So that's what gave us a tape delay or a tape echo. Not satisfied with just this, one of the things that happens with a tape echo or with any tape machine is if you change the speed of the tape machine, what gets played back, it changes the pitch as well. So we have the frequency changing if the speed of the tape changes, right? You may have heard the effect maybe on a record player or a tape machine where you hit stop and it slows down and it goes zoom, right? When it goes from slowing down to stopping, the pitch shifts down as well. If we started it back up again and it had to ramp up to speed, you would hear the sound going from really down low to really up high again, right? As it's gaining that speed, the pitch goes up. Now, if we combine those two principles where we've got the delay from the tape machine between the record and the playback head, and we've got the shifting pitch from the tape slowing down and speeding up, engineers would actually push down on the flanges of the tape reel to slow it down and then let go, causing less friction so that it would speed back up again. What this did is it created a short delay, but it also made it so that the delay's pitch was changing up and down as the delay time was shifting up and down. So there's two different things that are happening or changing when we're changing the speed of the tape. The delay times change and the pitch changes. So that's what's going on with our flanging effect. Now, is it appropriate for your song? I don't know, only you can tell that. But let's throw it on some guitar just for fun and hopefully Josh sees this in comments down below. So you hear that extra little That's the flanging effect. Again, keep it subtle, keep it safe. Don't make anybody stare at you when you're using this one. It can be cool or it can be really not cool. It's up to you. So that concludes this effects lesson, looking at the PreSona Studio Live Series 3 console. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you hit subscribe, don't ding the little bell. You don't need any more notifications in your life. Just keep coming back and watching Attaway Audio videos, because I'm here to help you make every mix enjoyable. Remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time on Attaway Audio.